Today, we will take a 10 minute deep dive into the lore and facts surrounding one of the most discussed and controversial topics of the 40k lore, the Space Marine successor chapters. Whether you yourself are interested in starting a new Space Marine army or just trying to uncover some more information about what these successors actually are, then this video will be perfect for you. Get yourself some delicious snacks and a cup of your finest beverage. And let's get on with the video. In the grim darkness of the far future, there are hundreds of unique chapters of Imperial Space Marines, fighting on countless planets and innumerable war zones in the name of the Holy Imperium. But all of these chapters have something in common. They are the successors to one of the nine original Space Marine Legions that stayed loyal to the Imperium during the Horus Heresy. The Loyalist Legions have been gone for over 10,000 years, but for each of those 9 chapters that kept the name and tactics of those original legions, there are many more successor chapters that bear the same pride. Every chapter is a brotherhood of over a thousand space marines. Some are almost the same, others completely different. Some follow the rules of the Imperium, some tarnish the name of their predecessors, and others are here to show who truly is the strongest. These are the successor chapters. The legions before the heresy were huge armies of bioengineered super soldiers, each with its own unique abilities and its own personal genetic pool of gene seed, which could heavily affect the space marines that were made using it, even up to 10 millennia later. The Dark Angels were the first legion to be created. They were insanely famous, but they were also paranoid and sneaky, hiding secrets from even their own brothers. The Ultramarines, yes, we've all heard of them, followed their big book of tactics, the Codex Astartes. Even though the betrayal had killed a bunch of them, there were still a lot of Ultramarines left. I guess some things never change. The Imperial Fists, who the Emperor trusted to defend Holy Terra, were stalwart masters of defense and never accepted defeat. The Blood Angels, the sons of Sanguinius the Angel, were incredibly noble, but cursed by their own gene seed with a thirst for blood and horrifying visions of how their gene father died. These were by far the largest and most famous legions, but fear not, there were more. The remote hunters of the White Scars, always mysterious, and the vicious Space Wolves. Some legions were almost destroyed during the heresy, or suffered a series of terrible disasters, and didn't make many successors at first. The tactical and sneaky Raven Guard, the logical Iron Hands, and the patient Salamanders were the prime examples of this. Still, even these smaller legions had enough marines to make successors, eventually. The first ever successor chapters were made directly from the soldiers of the Space Marine Legions. After the heresy, people didn't trust the Space Marines to be in huge legions. Armies that big could conquer the galaxy, which sounded like a good thing, until the War Master started worshipping Chaos and took hundreds of thousands of super soldiers with him. The new rules, the Codex Astartes, said that the chapters were supposed to be much, much smaller. Only around a thousand space marines. Say goodbye to the legions and say hi to the chapters of the second founding. It took a lot of convincing and nearly another civil war. But eventually, almost everyone agreed. Fun fact, the Flesh Terror Marines still have a root name for Reboot Gilliman for making them stop being Blood Angels. And no, it isn't Bobby G. They refer to him as the Butcher. With everyone else more or less happy, the Imperium's been making new successor chapters ever since. After the Big G came back to life in recent lore, he instigated a whole range of new foundings, which we now call the Ultima Founding. Whole chapters of new and improved Primaris Marines were produced for every sector of the Imperium. Old chapters were reinforced and the Imperium got a new breath of life. But back to the beginning before we get stuck in Primaris Haven. Let's take a look at some famous successor examples for each Legion. Let's start with the big one first, the Ultramarine successors. Oh boy, are there a lot of these guys. Two thirds of all the loyal Space Marines are Ultramarine successors. The High Lords of Terra and Big Daddy Games Workshop absolutely loved them. Their gene seed is incredibly pure and there were a lot of them to begin with back when the chapters were first created. Many follow every word of Gilliman's rules on how to run a chapter and wage war, especially those original chapters. 
Some are almost the same as the Ultramarines, such as the Genesis chapter. Others are specialists in a specific kind of warfare. The Praetors of Orpheus are really good with technology, and the Aurora chapter are famous for loving tanks. Fun fact, they have three times as many land raiders as other chapters. Other Ultramarine chapters are more interesting. Um, I mean Codex Divergent. The Iron Snakes fight in small squads of heroes rather than massive armies, each armed with armor-piercing spears. Well, it's been 3000 years since all the Nova Marines were fighting in the same place. Meanwhile, the Silver Skulls believe the Emperor himself tells them what to do, and will only fight if things are lucky and the Emperor say so. Some other Ultramarine successors went really off the rails. The Mortifactors love skulls, really love skulls, and they also have a really bad habit of eating their enemies. Meanwhile, the Doom Eagles are slightly less weird. They just think that they're dead already, because every Space Marine is supposed to die in the name of the Emperor himself. Still, no matter what they believe or how they fight, the Ultramarine successors respect their Primarch Space Daddy, Bobby G. And when he is not around to be suckled on, the chapter master of the Ultramarines does fine as well. In all honesty, if you see a Space Marine chapter, it's pretty likely they might be an Ultramarine successor. The Ultramarines weren't the only famous legion with equally famous successors. Their cousins, the Imperial Fists, are known for two things. Being really good at defending fortresses and being too stubborn to retreat. Sometimes this is epic, like when they manage to defend Terra from the traitors for the whole war. And sometimes it's not so epic, like when they nearly all got killed after the heresy was over, in a trap called the Iron Cage. After that absolute mess, the Crimson Fists were made from the newest marines who decided to follow the Codex Astartes, and are famous for managing to survive against alien invasions that would have beaten anyone else. While the Black Templars did the exact opposite. Instead of following the Codex, they decided to take their ships, go on a crusade, and just never stop purging Xenos and heretics for 10,000 years. There are lots of other Imperial Fist successors. Some just smash the enemies of mankind, like the Invaders or the Subjugators, while others like the Hammers of Dorne say that they are better at being Space Marines and following the Codex than the Ultramarines themselves, and that their dad is better too. Imperial Fist successors are often quite different from each other, and some are even known to fly around in massive crusade fleets. But this doesn't stop them from meeting up for epic dueling in a tournament called the Feast of Blades. Each Imperial Fist successor chooses a champion to take part in the dueling, which happens for several days straight, and they fight until one marine wins. Other than competitions, the Fists also have a secret plan, called the Last Wall. If something goes really wrong and Terra is about to be taken over, all the Imperial Fist successors will work together to beat them. No matter where they're from or what their fighting style is like now, the Sons of Rogaldorn are too stubborn to die without a fight. So these Ultra Boys and Fists were pretty famous, right? But there can only be one First Legion. The Dark Angels, the Originals, the guys the Emperor himself trusted with his secret tech. And now, they got lots of secrets of their own. Way back during the Horus Heresy, many of the Dark Angels betrayed the Emperor, and are still kicking it and fucking shit up to this day. The Dark Angel successors hate these ancient fallen brothers, and will do almost anything to hunt them down and destroy them. This grudge goes so far that they call themselves the Unforgiven, and definitely won't follow the Codex if it gets in the way of them secretly finding every last one of these Dark Angel traitors. Some of these chapters have ancient and powerful technology, like the Consecrators, while others completely focus on only hunting these fallen, like the Angels of Redemption and the Angels of Vengeance. No matter what they call themselves, the Dark Angels are all still Sons of the Lion. They all still hunt for the Fallen, and sometimes even secretly meet up to get orders from the Dark Angel Chapter Master. They're sneaky, they're proud, and they are really loyal. Speaking of secrets, the Blood Angel successors have plenty of their own. Sure, they might look like angels, but their gene seed flaws make them more akin to vampires. And they have a nasty habit of going crazy because of a curse called the Black Rage. Blood Angel successors tend to have a lot of weird habits. Some never remove their helmets, others are even called the Blood Drinkers. One chapter, the Lamenters, is just really, really unlucky. They were made to try and cure the problems with the Blood Angel gene seed, but instead just managed to have everything else go wrong for them instead. 
despite everything. They are some of the most noble of the Blood Angel successors. Other chapters have other problems. The Flesh Terrors, the guys who weren't happy about the Codex, they have a really bad habit of accidentally killing their allies. And the Knights of Blood went so crazy, they were declared traitors right before they died like fucking heroes. Every Blood Angel successor knows that the curse in their blood will follow them forever. But for all their secrets, for all their brothers are cursed until they die or worse. The Blood Angels and the successors still radiate bravery and nobility. Of all the Space Marine chapters, the Sons of Sanguinius are truly the closest to being the Angels of Death. And if one is in danger, they all will fight together to help their brother in need. The Iron Hands were once almost destroyed, and their love of machines hasn't made them many friends, even with their own brothers. But even these Techno Marines have successors too. The Sons of Medusa were originally Iron Hands who just left to do their own thing instead of fighting their battle brothers. While the Brazen Claws and Red Talons punished traitors and chaos using fierce anger as much as their technological skills, even if that means chasing them back into hell to do it. These are some of the most famous Legion successors, but the other Legions have had plenty of successors of their own as well. The White Scar successors are epic hunters, even if they don't always work well with other Imperials. The Mantis Warriors are incredibly fast, they attack and are gone before their enemies even know what hit them, while the Storm Reapers are always eager for a fight. In contrast, the Raven Guard's successors are masters of stealth. The Raptors are some of the best snipers in the galaxy, while the Revilers manage to defeat even the Spy Masters of the Alpha Legion. Not every Legion was able to found many successors. The Space Wolves tried once after the Heresy, but these new Wolf Brothers either went mad, died or worse. And the Salamanders were still rebuilding after the epic battles of the Heresy. Still, with the new Primaris Marines from the Ultima founding, the Wolves and the Salamanders now have successor chapters as well. The Dark Krakens fight giant sea monsters on their ocean homeworld, while the Wolf Spear are brave hunters, just like their Space Wolf predecessors. Sadly, not every successor is lucky enough to know who their gene seed comes from. The Blood Ravens pray to the Unknown Primarch, because they don't know which one is theirs, while the Soul Drinkers say they are the sons of Rogal Dorn. Meanwhile, the Minotaurs keep their history a complete secret, and people that ask too many questions will sometimes have accidents, with bolt rounds randomly exploding in their cranium. No matter whose successor they are, or who they call brothers, each chapter is a bright shimmer in the grim darkness of the far future. Every chapter has its own epic history, its own tactics, and its own honors. For in the grim darkness of the far future, the angels of death fight in the name of the Holy Emperor, and they shall know no fear. If you are searching for another Warhammer 40k lore video to watch, then click right here on the screen. I specifically handpicked it just for you to make sure it would be a perfect fit. Thank you all for watching, please like and subscribe if you haven't already, it helps me out more than you can imagine. And I will see you in the next one, bye bye! Thank <laughs> you.